I welcome back from that beautiful worship with our God. I hope you've shared the link. Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be sharing three ways that God promised to be with us, you know, his children, believers in the word. So I want you to trust God that God will speak to you this evening. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to us, speak through me. I yield myself as a vessel. I shut down the flesh, my mind, my reasoning, my thoughts, and I depend on you that your words will be spoken through my lips to your people and the listeners and those that will watch later on on youtube father i ask for transformation transformation beyond transformation let faith well up in them with this revelation they are about to unleash this evening in the name of jesus amen three ways the bible promised that god will be with us three ways and the first way i want to talk to you about is the bible says that god is for us hallelujah i want you to say it wherever you are type it in the comment section say god is for me and this beautiful phrase talks about god being on our side i want you to think about that for a second god is on your side so imagine if you have a football team and you've got Messi on your side. You've got Ronaldo on your side. You've got Haaland on your side. You've got Ederson as your goalkeeper. You've got Modric, you've got Bellingham in the midfield. You've got the power defenders at your rear. What kind of team is that? That is a dream team. When you have these Ballon d'Or winners, you know, achievers in their, in their different teams on your side. There's a way you stroll into the field when the match starts. You know, you'll be looking at your opponent as in, you are done for today. Why? You have confidence and faith in the people that are in your team. <laughs> oh, I like what Paul said in Romans. He said, if God be for us if god be for me who dares come against me who is that person that dares to stand against us <laughs> i'm sorry for that person who dares stand against us if god is on your side whoever tries or dares to stand against you when you know that God is for you and on your side, oh God, I don't want to be that person. They'll be mowed down, they'll be flattened, they'll be destroyed because God is for you. And I love some scriptures that talk about God being for us. One of my favorite is in Psalm 118 verse 6. He said, the Lord is on my side. This is a voice of someone that knows for certain that he's not alone. God is on my side, I will not fear. One of the first things that happens to someone that knows for certain that God is for them is that they are fearless. Fear evaporates. Anxiety disappears. Worry is non-existent because the almighty God, Jehovah, is on my side. He now said something. He said, what can man do to me? See, wherever you are, I need you to make this statement. Say, God is for me. <laughs> God is for Pastor B. <laughs> I don't fear what man can do to me. I don't fear what enemies can do to me. I don't fear what naysayers can say or do to me. I don't fear whatever gang up that rises amongst people against me. I don't fear <laughs> make that proclamation wherever you are because whatever you say the bible says you will have jesus said that 
that you will have whatever you say. Let's do that one more time. Say, God is for me. <laughs> say, I don't fear what anyone can do to me because God is right by my side. Oh, I want you to declare it from the mountaintop. <laughs> As you declare it, even if you're fearful, something happens. Every fear dissipates. <laughs> God is for Pastor B. God is for Activate Church. God is for you and your family and your children and your, and your, and your relatives and your family and your siblings and your parents. God is for you. God is for that business that you started. God is for that career that you are engaged in. God is in that academics, in your studies. And nothing, nothing, no one, no man, no woman, nothing, none whatsoever can challenge you and can do anything to you. It is your portion. I want you to shout a big hallelujah. I want you to shout a big hallelujah. Type it in the comment section. Say hallelujah. God is sure for me. <laughs> hallelujah. Another scripture I'm going to show you is 2 Kings chapter 6. But if I show you that scripture, I want to tell you a story. Maybe you've heard this story being told by me once. <laughs> um, I've got many stories. I'm just trying to figure out which ones to tell you. Okay, I think this one is beautiful. While I was in school, right, we used to go in, I used to live off campus, you know, on the outskirts of the school. So we used to go into school to study, especially during exams. So we had this um, exam coming up. And I went into school to study with one of my classmates. So we used to study from late evening till early hours of the morning. So around two, three in the morning, we were headed back to where we used to live. And as we approached the compound where we used to live, we noticed a long line of boys coming from the opposite direction. Now, back home in Nigeria, in the universities in Nigeria, we had what we call confraternity. This is a group of boys that come up together in a fraternity, but instead of being open, right, and uh, being public, so so to say, they are actually a secret society. It's actually what is commonly called gangs. But these gangs now are in the university, and this is something that eaten into the Nigerian education system is in almost if not all the higher institutions in nigeria so this particular we call them cult actually in school this particular cult they usually go to do what they, their initiations and the initiations are usually done late at night in the forest or in some remote place and in my school we were surrounded by forest and all that so they were you know in a procession, in a single fire procession, and they were coming towards us. So we kept on walking, we didn't relent. They kept on coming, we kept on walking towards them because I suspect that they were, or some of them, we are going to enter that compound that we lived, but we did not stop. We kept on going. See, the Bible says that the righteous is as bold as a lion. <laughs> so you just have to keep moving. The Bible says, I will not fear i will not fear the man that knows that god is with him does not fear so as they were coming i was we were coming and he got to a point when they noticed that we were not stopping we were not relenting because it's absurd for two individuals that are not in any cult two so-called civilians as they call those that are not in cult how would they keep coming when they have seen this lineup of boys and men. What is that thing that gave them courage? So I guess that they saw that we were not backing out. <laughs> Whoever that is in charge now gave a command that they should halt. So they now stopped and waited for us to walk in. So that's how we walked in. And my friend was shaking. He was afraid. I was like, keep going. Don't look back. Keep going. We walked in through the security post and we went straight to her room. I think I dropped her in her room. Then I walked back to my room. 
It's not like going into my room and now hearing, hearing footsteps. They, were, they started coming in and all that. The man that knows that God is with him is fearless. I will not fear what man will do to me. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. So he answered, Do not fear, for those that are with us are more than those that are with them. <laughs> this is the prophet Elisha speaking to his servant who was afraid because he saw an army of the Syrians coming to arrest his master. He was afraid, like, Master, Master, I see the army of the Syrians coming. And Elisha was like, come on, those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And he asked the Lord to open his eyes so he can see those that are with us. See, those that are functional with the people that know that God is for them, the people wouldn't have this revelation that are fearless. Those that are with them are more than whoever, whoever, whoever that is against them. So the eyes of the servant popped open and the Bible says that he looked out and he saw all around the mountains around them we are angels, but not regular angels. The Bible said these angels, we are like flames of fire and on horses that are flaming horses. <laughs> flames of fire and on flaming horses. Of course, you know that your souls, of course, are flaming. And he saw truly that those that stand with them, that those that are for them are more than those that are against them. I want you to say this again. God is for me. <laughs> say it again. Say God fights for me. <laughs> say God stands in battle for me. <laughs> say God represents me. <laughs> if Satan comes looking for me, <laughs> guess who he's going to see? He's going to see Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is going to open that door whenever the enemy knocks. <laughs> Jesus is going to stand <laughs> for in our defense <laughs> when they come attacking. <laughs> I declare this night <laughs> that Jesus, <laughs> the host of heaven, <laughs> is for me. <laughs> that they stand <laughs> for me that they will fight my battle and there is nothing no one can do against me wherever they go to to wage war against me wherever they go to to make incantation and enchantment against me the fire of god will be released on them anyone that speaks against me anyone that calls my name anywhere will receive fire as a backlash will receive thunder as a backlash whatever they say or do against me heaven will respond in the name of jesus <laughs> god is for pastor b god is for my spouse god is for my children god is for my business god guards everything that pertains to me i am covered by the blood of jesus no harm come before me. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Are you sure I will be able to finish this series today? <laughs> there is fire on my head. The anointing of God is on my head. I want you to take some few minutes and pray in tongues, wherever you are. Just pray, just pray, wherever you are. As you pray, decree that God is for me. I stand on this altar and I decree that God is for me. No harm can come upon me. No one can stand before me. No one can stand against me. God is for me. I've got angels garrisoned all about my property, all about everything I own, all about me. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so angels, so 
God surrounds me and anyone that fires an arrow against me receives hundred in return. Anyone that digs a pit against me will fall into it in the name of Jesus. Declare it, wherever you are declared. Uh, speak right now. <laughs> hey, you shall have what you say. Silence means consent. If you are not talking, you are giving in. <laughs> Fire those arrows. God is for you. God is for me. I will not fear what anyone can do against me. Glory to God. Oh, 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 Psalm, another Psalm. Psalm 56, verse 9. Hey, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God <laughs> is for me. <laughs> so you see from the scriptures, that the revelation that God is for you is what makes angels walk for you. He said, this I know because God is for me. God is for you. You are not alone. You might feel lonely <laughs> but I'm here to reassure you that you are not alone. You may feel that everyone have walked out from you, <laughs> but I'm here to reassure you that you are not alone. You may look around and people betrayed you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you <laughs> that you are not alone. God is for you and he's going to fight that battle for you. Oh, I sense in my spirit. There's someone facing unusual battle, unusual gang up against you. I decree now <laughs> that God fights the battle. Be still and know that he is God. Be still and watch the mighty man in battle, uh, Jehovah Sabaoth, uh, our banner, fight. For you. His name is Nisi. He doesn't back away from any fight. <laughs> His fight is swift. The Bible says, that's Jesus speaking. I saw Satan fall like lightning. In a twinkle of an eye, the battle is over. Because the one that is for us does not waste time in fighting battles. So hear me. Your victory is on the horizon. Don't lose heart. Don't lose your faith. Be still is the word for you. And know that God is for you. He will come through and he will fight the battle for you. This I know that God is for me. This revelation gives us unusual boldness. Hebrews 13 verse 6. So we may boldly say, <laughs> Where you know that God is for you. You have unusual boldness. <laughs> we may boldly say, what are we going to boldly say? The Lord is my helper. <laughs> I will not fear what man can do to me. Are you seeing that again? He is quoting <laughs> what we read at the beginning from Psalms. We will boldly say, Pastor Bill will boldly say that God is my helper. I will not fear what man will do to me. I want to bring out that word boldly. Those that know their God, the ones that know that God is for them, <laughs> the Bible says that they are bold as a liar. They are bold. There's a big difference between faith and boldness. The Bible says that faith coming by hearing and hearing. 
And faith has been given us. The Bible tells us that in Romans. That he has given each and every one of us the measure of faith. That we strengthen the faith by constantly hearing and hearing the word of God. But faith is not boldness. <laughs> boldness is different. You can have faith, but you are not bold. One of the reasons why, though we carry the spirits, and this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, we carry so much power, but we are not seeing miracles in our life. Though we carry the power, we are anointed and we have faith, why we don't see miracles in our life is that we are not bold. We don't step out boldly to exercise our faith. We don't step out boldly trusting that God will show up. The revelation that God is for you gives you boldness. <laughs> gives you boldness. Gives you boldness. When you know that God is for you, you are bold. You are bold. The Bible says this about the, the, the disciples in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, who are the day? These are the religious rulers that arrested them and accosted them after they saw them preaching and healing the man at the gate called Beautiful. They arranged them and wanted to put them in prison. But Peter and John spoke boldly. These are men. They were fishermen. They were not learned. And yet they are standing before lawyers, doctors, philosophers. And yet they were not shaken. They were not intimidated. They were bold. I <laughs> see what the learned men said. And the Bible says when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they, had, they were uneducated, and untrained men, they marveled. How can this man that are uneducated be so bold standing before us philosophers, standing before us professors? How? What is the problem? What is it? What do they know? What gives them such boldness? The Bible says that they realized that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> you cannot interface with Christ <laughs> and not be bold. It's not possible. You cannot have fellowship uh, with God uh, and not be bold. Uh. It is in a place of fellowship with God, in a place of intimacy with God, that this revelation that God is for you comes and it gives boldness. It gives boldness. It gives boldness. Hmm. But fret not. You might still be fearful. Because when Peter and John got back from this encounter, Bible said they went back to their own company in the same chapter of Acts chapter 4, in verse 29. Bible said that they prayed. By the time they prayed, see what they prayed. Oh Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness. Because they threatened them. They told them, don't speak again in this name. If you do, we will arrest you and <clears throat> we will jail you. They threatened them. So they went back to their company and they prayed. What was their antidote to their threats? The antidote to their threats, which they prayed in a prayer, is that God should grant them boldness. Oh, when the enemy rises like a flood, <laughs> you better be bold. <laughs> if you're not bold, get ready now and start praying for boldness. They prayed for boldness that they will declare, that they will flout the laws, the instruction, the command <laughs> of these religious rulers to them. They need their boldness. They are anointed. They got out on the day of Pentecost. They are men of faith, like you could see, they just healed someone and they get up beautiful on their way to the temple. So they were anointed, they are full of faith, but they needed to pray for boldness. They showed it once, but the threat would have affected their boldness. They went back to their company and prayed, not for God to strike them down, but they prayed for boldness to resist them. And the Lord gave them boldness. The Bible says in verse 31, <laughs> And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled 
together were shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You shall fearful. I'm going to pray that you receive boldness right now. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. You are free. I don't know what it is that you are afraid of. Afraid of death, afraid of tomorrow, afraid of this, afraid of that, afraid of the exam. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Lord, for the ones, wherever they are, raising up their hands. <laughs> Father, I ask that they may be infused <laughs> with supernatural boldness <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I command that spirit of fear out from the midst of you. <laughs> I infuse you with this knowledge that God is for you, <laughs> that no one can harm you, no one can stop you. <laughs> and I ask that boldness be instilled in you. <laughs> Let it well up in your heart and soul <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> amen <laughs> and amen. Glory be to God. Huh? I'm going to pray one more prayer as I end. The Bible says that God will judge all your enemies and those that come against you. <laughs> anyone that is oppressing you, anyone that is, you know, trying to get you sacked from that job. Huh? Anyone that has said that you will never get that job or that contract in that company. Anyone that has posed as an obstacle to you as a roadblock. Huh? Hey, this night, huh? to they, they will fall flat on their face. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 33, verse 3, they departed from Ramses, talking about the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt, in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the day after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with boldness. Who is Ramses? Ramses is the oppressor huh, that held them down, huh, that enslaved them. Huh. They even made their slavery and their toiling and their service to him worse because they demanded to leave. Huh. That is the oppressor. Wherever, whoever, wherever that person is, huh, that is standing against you, oppressing you, huh, that have said you will not make progress, huh, that have said you will not amount to anything in life, huh, he is the oppressor. Huh. And the Bible says huh, that God is executed judgment on the Egyptians, that God executed judgment on their gods, and God executed judgment on the oppressor Pharaoh, who finally sunk and drowned in the Red Sea. Yea, the word of the Lord, anyone standing before you, anyone opposing you, right now, I command them out. I command them flattened. I command them destroyed. I uproot them from that position that they think they have, that they want to use against you, to use against me, to use against Activate Church. Out, be gone, be flattened, disappear. I uproot you now. In the name of Jesus. Never again would you stand before God's people. We declare boldly. Say with me. God is for me. Now put your name. Say God is for Pastor B. <laughs> no one can rise against me. No one can rise against Activate Church. No one can rise against my family. No one can rise against your family. We seal it now in the name of Jesus. And we seal it by the blood of Jesus. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Go get communion. <laughs> quickly, quickly, quickly. I would have announced at the beginning, but I just feel right now. <laughs> I sense right now, we must seal this with the blood and no one dares come before us. The blood of Jesus will respond and answer them. Go, go, go. Hurry, hurry. Get the communion. Whatever drink you have, get whatever drink you have. Whatever drink, whatever drink. And get bread, biscuits, whatever you have. We are going to take communion. We are going to seal it by the blood. And make sure you join me on Tuesday. We are not done yet. There are three ways the Bible promises that God is going to relay with us. We just looked at one. God for us. There are other ones. Make sure you don't miss it. On Tuesday, we're going to look at the other two. This Tuesday by 8 p.m. Nigeria, 9 p.m. 
8 p.m. UK, 9 p.m. Nigeria, and I think 4 p.m. East Coast of the United States. Don't miss it. This Tuesday is going to be amazing. Oh, Raprakata Shatare Bretos, Vente de la Coto, Shante de la Bosa. Ah, yes, Ete Kesas, Ovri Pras and Delon Doyala, the Pacandulicious Prafrehendele Kedul Move, Akranda Yagaba. No sickness, no sickness. Whatever sickness that the enemy has plagued you with to stop you, he ends as you take this communion. In the name of Jesus. You cannot be sick. I need you to arise from that bed after this communion and start doing the things you cannot do, the things you could not do before. Start doing them. Start doing them. Don't lie around in bed. You might be tired. Yes, I know. But you must act the faith out, the faith of God in you. You must act it out. When you don't act it out, The miracle is told. You must walk by faith. We are not the ones that are fearful. We are not afraid. Oh, Mesh, that's fires. Father, I bless this communion. Lord, first I ask that you wash us with your blood. Cleanse us from all sin and impurity. So that we can approach your throne boldly to obtain grace and mercy. But I ask for mercy, mercy, mercy which triumphs over judgment. Whatever I have done, whatever any one of us have done, that will deny us access into your throne room. Cleanse us as we come by the blood. We repent of our sins and wrongdoings. Wash us, O oh Lord, with His soul. Prune us, purify us, and clothe us in your white treatment as we come boldly into your presence. And Lord, as we partake of these elements, we seal our confession, our declaration that you are for us that you're the mighty man in battle that fight our battle. As we take this blood and the blood and the body of Christ, no one can, 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 or tries, dares to rise against us. We'll be disappointed. We'll be put to shame. We'll be mowed down. We'll die on our behalf. Because you said you will give men life in exchange for us and as you take this communion our fear will go ahead of us they will know no peace no rest none i seize their peace i terminate their rest the restlessness becomes their portion till they fall flat on their face in the name of jesus any arrow shot at us goes back to sender seven times. Any pit dug for us, they will fall into it seven times. They will be buried and they will be utterly destroyed if they don't cease and persist to stand before us. In the name of Jesus. On the day he was crucified, he took bread and break and said, this is his body broken for us. He took the cup of wine and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. And Lord, you commanded us as often as we can, we should do this in remembrance of you. And you gave us your word. You will never leave us <laughs> nor forsake us. That you will always be there by our side. You say whatever we ask in your name, you Lord Jesus will do it for us. Father, we are asking that you be for us like you promised. That you wage war for us like you promised. That you silence and put to shame anyone that stands before us or comes against us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, it is done. <laughs> Just give him praise. <laughs> 
Thank you, Jesus. Mandele revaso to preken tayasa. Oh, thank you, Lord. It is done. It is signed. It has been sealed. It has been delivered to us. Go in this your might, in this strength, knowing for sure that you're not alone. Knowing for sure that you've got an army waging war on your behalf. Know for sure that your enemies are gone. The Egyptians you saw yesterday, <laughs> you shall see no more. They are all drowned in the rest sea, never to arise again. I'll see you on Tuesday. Keep it there with me. Go succeed. Go prosper. For God is with you. If you got an offering, this is the time to give it. But I bless the givers. <laughs> but I increase them. Use their offering as a point of contact to bring this word that we've declared this night to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you on Tuesday. I love you. Bye-bye.